For over a decade, McLaren has been synonymous with high-performance supercars, all powered by their signature twin turbocharged V8 engines. From the pioneering MP4-12C launched in 2011 to the formidable Senna, McLaren's lineup has showcased a remarkable consistency in delivering unparalleled speed, agility and driving pleasure. However, the automotive world is rapidly evolving, and McLaren is poised to make a significant shift to stay ahead of the curve. Currently, McLaren is working on an SUV, or an SPV as they like to call it, and they're also working on a hybrid vehicle. This move signals a bold and strategic expansion beyond the brand's traditional supercar territory. And while former CEO Mike Fluitt had been adamant that McLaren would never produce an SUV, current CEO Michael Leiters has a different vision. So in this video, we're delving deep into McLaren's surprising new venture, exploring what it means for the future of this iconic brand. And without much ado, let's dive right in. McLaren's journey so far McLaren Automotive has carved a unique niche in the supercar industry with its journey reflecting a blend of innovation, triumph and challenges. The company's early years were marked by a series of successes that quickly established it as a formidable player in the high-performance car market. The launch of the MP4-12C in 2011 was a significant milestone. This model, with its advanced carbon fiber chassis and powerful twin turbocharged V8 engine, set new standards for performance and technology in the supercar segment. It was more than just a car, it was a statement that McLaren was ready to compete with the best in the world. Following the MP4-12C, McLaren continued to build on its momentum with a series of successful models. The P1, introduced in 2013, was a hybrid hypercar that showcased McLaren's prowess in combining electric power with traditional combustion engines. It was followed by the 675 LT and the 720S, each pushing the boundaries of speed, agility and driving dynamics. The Senna, named after the legendary Formula 1 driver Ayrton Senna, epitomized McLaren's commitment to track-focused performance. These models didn't just perform well, they redefined what enthusiasts expected from a supercar, placing McLaren alongside Ferrari and Lamborghini in the supercar market. However, McLaren's journey was not without its setbacks. As the company expanded its lineup, it also faced significant challenges. The McLaren GT, marketed as a Grand Tourer, failed to resonate with its intended audience, who found it lacking in both luxury and performance compared to its competitors. The Elva, a roofless and doorless model, struggled to find buyers willing to pay its hefty price tag. Production numbers were cut significantly, as demand fell short of expectations. These product missteps highlighted the difficulties McLaren faced in trying to diversify its offerings without diluting its brand essence. Now, financial troubles compounded these product issues. The COVID-19 pandemic hit McLaren hard, leading to a sharp decline in sales and revenue. The company was forced to take drastic measures, including laying off a quarter of its workforce and mortgaging its iconic headquarters and heritage car collection to raise necessary funds. The launch of the McLaren Artura, the company's first plug-in hybrid, was delayed multiple times, adding to the financial strain. In 2023, McLaren reported a staggering loss of $1.1 billion, underscoring the severity of its financial woes. Leadership changes further complicated the situation. Longtime CEO Mike Fluitt, who had overseen many of McLaren's successes, stepped down amid the turmoil. His departure marked the end of an era and the beginning of a critical transitional period for the company. Michael Leiters, a former Ferrari executive, took over as CEO in July 2022. Leiters brought with him a wealth of experience and a fresh perspective, but he also faced the daunting task of steering McLaren through its most challenging period. One of Leiters' first moves was to simplify McLaren's ownership structure, which had been a source of internal conflict and inefficiency. In March 2023, Bahrain Sovereign Wealth Fund, Mumtalakut, took full control of the company, providing a more streamlined and stable ownership. This move was crucial in stabilizing McLaren's finances and creating a more cohesive vision for its future. Leiters also initiated a strategic shift aimed at diversifying McLaren's product lineup and exploring new market segments. 
Recognizing the growing demand for high-performance SUVs, he announced plans to develop what he termed a shared performance vehicle. This new direction represented a significant departure from McLaren's traditional focus on supercars but was seen as necessary evolution to ensure the company's long-term viability. Now, despite these challenges, McLaren remained committed to its core values of performance and innovation. The Artura, although delayed, eventually launched to positive reviews, showcasing the company's ability to adapt and innovate. So, let's take a look at this model and see what McLaren thinks of the future. The McLaren Artura The McLaren Artura represents a significant shift for McLaren, marking the company's first venture into hybrid powertrains. This hybrid powertrain is a notable departure from McLaren's traditional twin turbocharged V8 engines. Under the hood, the Artura features a 3.0-litre twin turbocharged V6 engine, complemented by a compact electric motor and a 7.4kWh lithium-ion battery. This combination produces a total of 671 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque. The integration of the electric motor provides instant torque, enhancing the car's responsiveness and reducing turbo lag. This setup allows the Artura to deliver impressive performance while also improving fuel economy and reducing emissions, a crucial consideration in today's automotive landscape. Driving the Artura is an exhilarating experience. McLaren has engineered the car to maintain its reputation for performance and driving dynamics. The hybrid system offers a seamless blend of power from both the internal combustion engine and the electric motor. This results in a 0-60 mph time of just 3 seconds, making it one of the fastest cars in its class. The electric motor, housed within the 8-speed dual-clutch transmission, ensures that power delivery is smooth and immediate. This setup also allows for a fully electric driving mode, providing up to 11 miles of range, which is ideal for urban environments or short trips. The McLaren Artura introduces McLaren's new carbon lightweight architecture, CLA, which is both lighter and stronger than previous designs. The architecture underpins the Artura's impressive performance and handling characteristics. The carbon fiber monocoque is higher around the A and B pillars, which eliminates the need for separate bonded metal parts and enhances the car's structural rigidity. Additionally, the windshield frame is integrated into the monocoque, and the side impact beams extend further rearward to protect the battery and fuel tank, further improving safety and durability. Now, the use of advanced materials and engineering techniques extends to the Artura's subframes as well. The aluminum front and rear subframes provide sturdy yet lightweight mounting points for the engine cradle and suspension components. These subframes are designed to be deformable and replaceable, preserving the integrity of the carbon monocoque in the event of a collision. Strategic carbon cross members enhance the overall rigidity of the structure, contributing to the car's precise handling and stability. Comfort and usability are also key aspects of the Artura's design. Unlike many supercars, the Artura is designed to be as comfortable on city streets as it is on the track. The car features adaptive dampers that offer a range of settings from comfort to sport to race, allowing drivers to tailor the suspension to their needs. This flexibility makes the Artura a more versatile vehicle, providing a smooth ride over rough roads while still delivering exceptional performance when desired. The Artura also features a range of advanced technologies to enhance the driving experience. The car defaults to an E-mode powertrain setting, which uses the electric motor for low-speed driving, making it ideal for navigating urban environments. The powertrain can also switch to comfort mode, balancing the use of the electric motor and the internal combustion engine for optimal efficiency. For more spirited driving, the sport and track modes unlock the full potential of the hybrid powertrain, providing exhilarating acceleration and dynamic handling. McLaren may have caved to the mounting pressure to produce EVs, but it sure made an impressive entrance with this model. But what about its SUV? Well, let's take a look. The McLaren SUV now, McLaren's decision to venture into the SUV market marks a bold strategic shift, signaling the brand's intention to broaden its appeal and tap into a lucrative segment. It's tried to cover the fact that it wants to produce an SUV by calling it a Shared Performance Vehicle, or SPV, but it's basically an SUV. 
This move is not just about diversifying their product line, it's about staying competitive and relevant in a rapidly changing automotive landscape. The global demand for luxury SUVs has surged in recent years, driven by a growing customer base that values both performance and practicality. This trend presents a substantial market opportunity for McLaren. Luxury SUVs from brands like Ferrari and Lamborghini have demonstrated significant success, indicating strong consumer interest in high-performance, premium utility vehicles. McLaren's foray into this segment aims to capture a share of this expanding market, offering a unique blend of performance, luxury and innovation. Now, comparing McLaren's upcoming SUV to competitors like the Ferrari Pura Sangue and Lamborghini Urus highlights the fierce competition in the high-performance SUV segment. Ferrari's Pura Sangue combines the brand's legendary performance with the practicality of an SUV, offering a powerful V12 engine and a spacious, luxurious interior. Similarly, Lamborghini's Urus has set a high standard with its aggressive design, exceptional speed and advanced technology. McLaren's challenge will be to differentiate its SUV through unique features, superior performance and the distinct driving experience that the brand is known for. Under the leadership of CEO Michael Leiters, McLaren is exploring various avenues to ensure that the SUV embodies the brand's core values of performance and innovation. Leiters, who, as we had mentioned, previously led Ferrari's technology division, brings a wealth of experience and a fresh perspective to McLaren. His vision includes leveraging strategic collaborations to enhance the development process, ensuring the new SUV meets the highest standards of performance and quality. For instance, McLaren has had discussions with BMW, a company known for its versatile modular architecture. This platform, which underpins BMW's V8-powered XM PHEV, could be a foundation for McLaren's SUV, integrating McLaren's powertrain into an existing structure. Such a partnership would allow McLaren to focus on its strengths in lightweight engineering and high-performance dynamics while benefiting from BMW's established SUV platform. The vehicle will likely feature a hybrid powertrain, combining an internal combustion engine with an electric motor to deliver outstanding performance while adhering to stricter emissions regulations. This aligns with McLaren's strategy of integrating hybrid technology across its lineup, as seen with the Artura. The SUV is expected to offer a power output that rivals or exceeds competitors, ensuring it delivers the thrilling driving experience McLaren customers have come to expect over the years. We currently don't have much details about this new SUV, but we'll definitely keep you updated once we get more information. So, what do you think about the prospect of a McLaren SUV? Let us know in the comment section down below, and until next time, thanks for watching.